Hey, what's up guys? It's Jared with the Inner Squared Circle and I want to give you guys today how to get more bookings without banging your head against the wall. That's today's topic. And there's three main problems that I see that most guys run into time and time again. I want to help you guys with that today, how to avoid them, how I see to get over them. And I want to keep it really simple and easy because there's no need to overcomplicate this, right? So I want to give you guys uh, the rundown of how this all works. So I'm pulling up my screen. You should have it right now. There's, you should be seeing the, the title screen. Like, just let me know if it's there. It's called how to get more bookings without banging your head against the wall. And the outcome is simple. We want to get you guys more bookings without doing more of the stuff that doesn't work. Have you guys ever experienced this before where there's like a five year, 10 year veteran, but they've been living the same year of their career over and over and over again, right? That's, that's not their fault. And we're going to get into this in this uh, presentation here in this little uh, mini seminar. But what I've noticed is there comes a time when guys are ready to get to the next level, but they're stuck in a groundhog's day loop. And I want to help you get out of that without banging your head against the wall. So here's what I see. The main problem is wrestlers getting bookings. It's not a matter of passion. If you're in this seminar, if you're in this group, if you're in this business, you have passion for it. This business is not for, for everybody. But I always, even, even when I was in the business full time, I was always obsessed with this question. Why do some guys make it? And why do other guys don't? And it never made sense to me because it didn't always come down to passion. Have you ever seen it before? There are guys with the most passion in the world, the, the, the most talent for the business. And then somebody else comes along that hasn't been in it nearly as long, doesn't seem to have the same talent, but for some reason they make it a lot faster. So I'm scratching my head on this and I'm like, is it always a matter of talent? Is it always a matter of passion? What I found is it's, it's usually a matter of the talent's belief system, okay? And I'm gonna share that with you today so it makes a lot of sense. Here is what I found. Most wrestlers believe if they work for free, send out emails and be really, really respectful and show a lot of passion, eventually they'll get an opportunity. The truth is though, if you actually look at it long-term, I'm not knocking hard work. I'm not knocking passion. I'm not knocking working for free and sending emails if you have to, right? That's, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there's like this, it's like two plus two doesn't equal 18. Two plus two equals four. But for some reason, wrestlers go, well, if I'm gonna make it, then I have to work for free. I have to be really respectful. Um, I have to set up the ring for free. Like, I'm not saying don't pay your dues, but let me ask you, like, is it possible to be a really great talent that sets up the ring and pays your dues for free and never get an opportunity? Like, I hate that that's the case, but one plus one doesn't equal 18, right? It doesn't always mean results. Like there's no actual correlation between the amounts of chairs you set up, even though that's a helpful thing to do with becoming a star and getting more bookings. So we're going to talk about that. Like, and, and, don't, and please understand where I'm coming from. It's cool to pay your dues. It's cool to have passion. It's cool to help out. But what I'm saying is volunteerism and staying at like that low bottom of the barrel does not equal success and results long-term. Okay, we'll get into that. Um, that's actually the long way to do stuff. And what, what I found is when it doesn't work out for wrestlers, I, I'm guilty of this too. When I was in the business full-time, I, I had to get snapped out of this. But instead of changing their approach, wrestlers do more of what doesn't work, right? Like if they're in the business four, five, six years and they're sending out emails and getting ignored, going to a show to set up the ring to meet a promoter and the promoter goes, hey, nice to meet you, brother, and Kay Fabes you. They, they usually don't change their strategy until they get really pissed off, right? What they do is they go, oh crap, I have to show more passion. And then they do more of it and it doesn't work even more. And then you got those guys that are 10, 15 years in that, that never made it or they get bitter. Do you know what I'm saying? So I want to fix this now before it gets to be a big problem. So here's a framework that I've created, right? It's not a perfect framework. Vince McMahon didn't come down from the mountain and say, here's how to double your bookings, but this is patterns, right? Remember I told you there are some wrestlers that make it, some wrestlers that don't. I'm obsessed with why. I'm obsessed with the patterns. So the people that are successful or the people that are unsuccessful, rather, I've noticed three main problems. because I've talked to hundreds of wrestlers in the past few years. What happens, number one, is when you're trying to double your bookings, the challenge is going from bottom to left to right. Promoters don't know who you are or you don't stand out, right? For every, 
you got to put it this way. I, I've received emails before for every, you know, email you send out, there's probably 20, 20 is a low number. There's probably like a hundred other guys that have sent a similar email. Hello, sir. Nice to meet you. My name is such and such. I've worked here. So a lot of guys don't stand out either with how they're talking, either with their character, either with their, their work rate. A lot of guys just blend in, right? So when it comes time to getting bookings, the person that's going to stand out the most is going to usually win. The person that markets themselves the best is usually going to win. At a certain point, like it's, it's not talent that's going to get you there. It's going to be the best marketed talent and the best talent that networks and stands out, right? Everybody has to have talent, but let, let's say everybody's equivalent across the board. The one that's going to get the bookings is the one that stands out. And many wrestlers don't. Okay. And it's, it's usually just because of habits and belief systems. We're going to talk about how to fix this. The second thing on the left is wrestlers get stuck playing the free game. I'm going to talk about this more in a few minutes, but what I've noticed is when there's like two different ways you can compete, right? You can either compete by being the cheapest option or you can compete by being the best option for some reason. And I don't know why, I've been in the business too, so I know the peer pressure and I know the pressure from the promoters. But when you're not getting what you want, there's a tendency for wrestlers to go cheaper and to do more stuff for free instead of upping their game, okay? So what they're doing is like, instead of trying to compete by being the best, they're competing by being the cheapest and most available. And when you do that, it's just gonna be like the luck of the draw, right? So we wanna make sure that you're not competing playing the free game. We wanna get you to that point where you're, you're adding something to the show. You have more to offer. You become a bigger star. You, you see what I'm saying? We don't want you stuck on the, on the low levels. And then on the right, like we talked about this before, they keep repeating what doesn't work. And I think that's not because they don't want to. I think it's because it, it's always been that way, right? H have, you, have you ever heard, and comment below if you've heard this, has there, has there ever been a time when you've heard, you know, there's the right way to do this business, right? Um, ears open, mouth shut, pay your dues. I'm not knocking that, right? Trust me, I'm, I'm going to get into this in a second. But if, if the quote unquote unwritten right way was always the way to make it, then why are there so many guys miserable, not getting what they want, not getting paid, not getting out there, stuck in their local area, right? Like, because th they just keep repeating more of what doesn't work. And what I found is like, if, if I'm in first grade, and I keep doing first grade stuff, but I'm ready for college. Like there comes the time I have to graduate. So we're going to get into now. Th this is the main problem. Guys can get stuck here for years. So what I want to do is I want to go through each of these and there's a solution to them. And for each solution, there's some strategies. So we're going to go through them today. So here we go on the bottom. If promoters don't know you and you don't know how to stand out, then we got to get you guys over and stand out. Right? So remember I told you before we can either compete on, price or we can compete on being the most valuable guy out there. One of the fastest ways to get more bookings is to get you over and to get you to stand out. Right. If, if, and I've heard the debate, right. Um, people are like, you know, Netflix has a free trial. So wrestlers should work for free too and get the bookings later. Uh, that's cool. I, I, I get it. Right. But they're picture like a life cycle. picture like a life cycle. If I'm one years old and I can't walk, it's probably a normal problem. If I'm 15 and I can't walk, there's, I, there's probably a problem with my legs and I need to get checked out by a doctor, <laughs> right? So if you're 15 years in the business and you're not standing out and nobody knows who you are yet, the problem isn't that you're not working for free. The problem is you haven't figured out how to get over yet. You follow me on that? So we want to get you over and get you to stand out. And there's some strategies we're going to go through. On the left side, if you're stuck playing the free game, obvious answer, we want to get you paid. But it's not like, hey, nice to meet you. Here's the first time. I, I demand 250. There's a, there's a way to do this, right? And I'll share with you some of the, the ways. But you're not in this business to work for free forever, nor should you be. And uh, there's some money beliefs that wrestlers have where, you know, either if they got paid, they don't, they're not, if they got paid, they're not passionate. There's a lot of stuff like that that shows up. Like if I got paid, it means I don't, I don't love the business. It means uh, I disrespect my art. Um, you know, I'm only doing this for the love of the game, all sorts of stuff like that. If you get paid for your art, it doesn't mean you don't have passion for the business, right? As a matter of fact, like you want to get to that point. If you're, if you're a great artist at this thing, you want to get to that point where you're at a high level, you get paid because then more people get to see you and you get to actually provide for your lifestyle. 
right? Like getting paid isn't a dirty word. I've been there before. I've been a year, two years in the business and the promoter is trying to be like, well, you know, brother, you know, we can't pay you. And uh, if you go someplace that's going to pay you, then you don't love the business. Like, it's just like, it's gaslighting, right? So we want to get you paid. There's a strategy to do that. You're probably not going to get 150, 200 bucks a night when you're like a, a month in, but we don't want you on that level on the poverty line for 15 years, right? And then finally on the right, people keep repeating what doesn't work over and over and over again. Well, we want to get you results with proven strategies, right? A lot of wrestlers do the same thing. doesn't work. They bang their head against the wall, wonder why it's not working. Well, we got to shift your focus. You know, if, if, you're, if you're stuck in a cage and you're trying to get out the front, we got to take you one step back and say, there's a door right there and get you out the door to actually get you guys results. So those are the three things. We want to get you guys over and have you to stand out. We want to get you to get paid and we want to get you results consistently. All right. And there's some ways we can do this. So we're making the triangle smaller here. Underneath getting you over and having you stand out, there's three main ways to do it. All right? And so put it this way. If you have none of these things, you're going to have a really hard time. The more of these things you start to get, and the more of these things you start to be better at, the better your chances are going to be. Remember I told you some wrestlers, you know, no matter what, some wrestlers make it, some wrestlers don't. What I found is the ones that make it are the ones that have more of these factors. You see? So if we're going to get you over and stand out, well, first of all, you have to have an awesome character, an awesome presentation. We've got to get you to, net to network the right way, right? And we've got to get you to master communication confidence. And I'll get into each of these. If you want to get paid, well, we, first of all, we got to know what level you're at, right? Like if you're, and we got to be realistic about it. If you're brand new, you're not going to get 150, 200 bucks. If you're brand new, you're, you're probably going to have to do the uh, work for free for a little bit, right? But we don't want you doing that forever. So knowing when to start charging, knowing how to ask for it. That's the third thing is knowing how to ask for it. So give me a second and I'll get there. But you got to know what level you're at and you got to be able to progress up, up the timeline. Because remember I told you before, like if you're in first grade, you don't want to stay at first grade for 15 years. You want to go to middle school. You want to go to high school. You want to go to college. You want to get a job eventually, right? So we don't want you to stay at that free level. We want to get you, there's certain milestones to hit. The second thing is we, we want to get you to become high value. So remember we said a lot of wrestlers don't stand out. Don't think of this in terms of, bad wrestler, good wrestler, good worker, bad worker. Think of this in terms of lower value talent and higher value talent. Okay. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you go to a promotion and, and a lot of people look the same, act the same, talk the same, um, it, it's more common. You see, we got to get you higher value by having you understand a couple things. We got to get you to understand how to have your it factor, how to have a kid. So we, we don't want you to be somebody that blends in. And as a matter of fact, as you become a higher value worker, you'll be able to get paid more. And then uh, finally, we want you to know how to ask. Because have you been in the scenario where the promoter's like, how much, how much do you pay? Or how much, or, you know, what's your fee? And you don't know what to say. You, you freeze it, what, whatever you want. You know, usually it's 25, but I'll take 20. And all, all of a sudden it's like, well, you know, usually it's 20, but I, you know, the first one, like, or you don't even know how to ask at all. Like there's that weird thing where you're having a conversation and then money gets brought into it and then it gets weird. You know, you don't know what to ask. You don't know how to ask confidently. You're hoping that when you say the number, they're not going to kayfabe you. You go lower than you really want. It's, it gets weird. So we want you to know how to ask, know how to ask confidently, and know how to ask in a way that makes sense. And then finally, on the right, to get you results, we want to know your reasons why, okay? A lot of wrestlers want to wrestle just, just because. Like, what, you know, what do you want to do? I want to wrestle. Why? It's my dream. Cool. I respect that. But if you have, if you have weak reasons, you have weak motivation. If you have strong, if you have strong reasons, you have strong motivation. I want to make it all the way to WWE because this, 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 and this, we got to get you really, really strong reasons as to why, uh, to get you passionate about it. Right. Then we got to get you clear on what you want. So if uh, or a lot of wrestlers don't make it, not because of a lack of passion, they lack, they, they don't get there because of lack of clarity. I say, Hey, what do you want to do? They go, I, I want to wrestle. I go where anywhere. I just want to make it. I go, well, what does that mean? I want to wrestle every weekend. I go, well, well you are right now, even though it's on the independent level, you, you technically got what, like if you're setting a goal, 
you got what you want, even if it's not what you want. If you say you want to make more money in wrestling and you make five more dollars at the merchandise stand, you made more money in wrestling, but you really mean you want to be able to pay for your family. You want to be able to make a living off of this, right? So we got to get clear where you want to go, what your outcomes are, what your goals are, and then we need effective strategies to reach your goals. Many wrestlers don't have effective strategies. The strategy is try really hard and hope, but there's no system, right? There's no system of communication. There's no way to write emails. There's no way to meet people. Uh, there's no strategies on goal setting and continuing to, to move, move your, move your uh, career with the right direction, right? So we've got to know your reasons. We've got to get you really clear on your outcomes. We've got to get you effective strategies. So that's the overview. We'll go in a little bit deeper for each one for a second. So uh, here it is. Okay, so problem number one on the bottom of the triangle. Remember, the problem is promoters don't know you and you don't stand out. The usual solution, what most wrestlers do and what most people will tell you to do is be nicer, show more passion, be more humble, volunteer more, send more emails. Remember I told you like most wrestlers just double down on the same stuff that hasn't been working for them. Here's what... I noticed if you're not standing out and you're, if, let me, let me word it a different way. If you're doing the right strategy, if you're doing the right strategy, but you're not standing out, you're going to be banging your head against the wall, right? You need to have, you need to have the presence, you need to have the psychology and you need to have the strategies, right? Sending out more emails when you're already getting ignored, there's, there's a problem there. You see, doing more of what's not working, there's a problem there. It's not, it's not you loving the business by continuing to do what doesn't work, right? Mike Bucci from WWE's former head of talent development used to tell me and my friends, if you keep doing what you're doing, you'll keep getting what you got. So we got to switch, right? Instead, we want to get you over and stand out. So how? Well, first of all, have an awesome character and develop your it factor, right? Sounds simple enough, but we'll get in a little bit deeper. The second thing is we want to network the right way. Um, so how do we do that? Well, what's the right way to meet people in person? Are you, just, are you just going to a show and setting up the ring and then hoping they notice you? Or do you have an outcome? Do you know how to introduce yourself to people? Do you know how to write an email the right way? Do you know how to, how to always be persistent but not be annoying? There's a lot of stuff that goes into this. And then number three, we got to master communication confidence. A lot of wrestlers are, are timid. And I don't mean that negatively, but what they're doing is they're hoping someone notices them. So when they send out an email, it'll be, uh, they don't ask for what they really want. They'd be like, hey, sir, how are you? I'm going to be in your area. You don't have to book me if you don't want to. If there's a spot, that's cool, but I'm not asking for anything. Like you're, you're not leading with a good first impression. There's a way to have communication confidence, a way to write emails that don't get you ignored. There's a way to meet people. There's a way to have energy in your voice. Like there's a way to really communicate that you're a high value talent that doesn't, that doesn't get you ignored, right? You got to know how to talk to people. And you got to know how to network the right way. The next thing we have here is remember on the left, we had people are playing the free game, right? The usual solution of this is we talked about an upward spiral and then there's a downward spiral. Many wrestlers do the downward spiral. It's a lowest common denominator game. And what they do is instead of becoming even better, instead of adding more value, they start to do the bottom of the barrel thing and they try to compete on being the most, uh, the, the least priced. Uh, the most stuff they'll do for free, uh, the most passion, the most easily available. Um, and so what happens is you get all these guys who are like, well, they're all similar and they're all working for free. So which one of you really stands out? If you keep trying to lowball yourself to get bookings and opportunities, you're going in the wrong direction, right? So instead, we want to get you paid. But how do we do this? So the first thing is we want to know what level you're at, right? And there's a whole thing that I do. It's called the four levels of independent wrestling. What we do is we make a framework where there's basically level one, two, three, and four. Level one is when you're brand new. You're brand new in the business and you work for free because you kind of have to. Like nobody really knows you. You travel to a show, you volunteer, they might give you a spot. Like it's an even trade off and it feels good because you need that, right? It's like you're trading experience for helping them out, right? And then you make some progress. So level two is like, well, you've been doing that for a while. 
you're making progress, you're getting more consistent bookings, you're getting a little bit of pay here and there, but it's inconsistent, but there's more progress. So now you go, oh, well, I've been volunteering for a while. It got me this far. And it's like it links up. It's like, oh, one plus one equals 18, like we talked about before. Uh, we go, if I keep volunteering for free, then I'll make it all the way to WrestleMania, right? Because it's worked for a little bit. But at level three, you hit a wall. And level three is when you've been doing it for a while. You have a lot of talent. You're, you're known. You're missing that one or two things. But you're still doing stuff you did in the beginning. And it's not working anymore. And you don't know why. Right? What we want to get you to do is we want to know what level you're at. We want to know what it's going to take you to get to the next level. And we don't want you to keep repeating level one things over and over and over again. That's why guys get burnt out. They've outgrown level one, but don't realize there's level two, level three, level four, and they keep doing the same thing. And it doesn't work for them anymore. And like at level three, there's a shift you have to make where it's like, it's no longer work for free, work cheap. And, and beg for a booking. It's like, this is the time where you got to do the add more value, get even better, become a top star game. And if you make the shift from level three to level four, then you start to get, you know, the MLWs, the, uh, the impacts, the, you, you make it to the next level. That's when you get a developmental deal. Like when you shift from three to four, you see, but people stay on level one, repeat it over and over and over again wonder why it doesn't work. They've never made the shift, you see? So we want to know what level you're at. We want to get you to the next level so you can build and eventually get to that point where you can get paid what you, what you deserve. There's a process we go through. The second is become a high value talent. So the wrestling business is funny because it's three businesses. It's the sports business. It's the entertainment business. And it's, it's a real business, right? So you have to have three different skill sets. But what do they all teach you in wrestling school? be a good worker, right? It's fine. So sports, the sports aspect is be a good worker, uh, have a great written ring psychology. Everybody needs that, right? But most wrestlers, a majority of wrestlers only focus on the sport, the art portion of it, the sport portion of it, the moves, the psychology, and, and that's it. A, a little bit more of a portion of the guys, what they do is they focus on the entertainment. They have the sports and they have the entertainment. Entertainment is character development. It's charisma. It's the it factor. Uh, it's great production. It's, it's something like marketable, right? So you got to have sports and you got to have the entertainment uh, value there, right? But then the third thing is you have to have the business stuff too. Market yourself effectively, communicate effectively, uh, getting bookings effectively, managing your schedule, your time, merchandising. Like there's a whole business aspect of it too. What I've noticed is it's not good worker, bad worker, but remember we said like lower value talent is more common, right? There are many wrestlers out there that are good workers that wear, you know, decent gear and have good independent wrestling matches, right? In order to become a high value talent, it's not enough to just be good at the sport. You have to have all three. You have to have the sports, you have to have the entertainment portion, and you have to have the business portion. Many wrestlers might have sports and entertainment, but business is tough because they're not sure, nobody's taught them that before. We can help you with that. And the third thing is know how to ask without making it weird. So you, you talk to a promoter, uh, it's going well for a while. It gets to the money conversation. You go, I, I, I don't know, I guess I'm free. Because you, you don't want to bury yourself. You don't want to miss the opportunity. We got to get you to the point where you're confident in yourself, where you can say there and say, my rate is this. This is what I normally get. This is what it's going to be. And, but make it not be weird. How do you do that in a sincere, confident way, right? Many wrestlers go cheap because they don't know how to ask for it. We got to share with you how to do it, right? And then finally, problem three on the right, on the right side of the triangle is they just keep repeating what doesn't work over and over and over again. And the usual solution is when the, when the right way doesn't work is they just try harder doing the same strategies despite it not working before and they don't change their approach. Well, like, cause it's going to pay off someday, right? I, I get it. I respect that. I used to be there too. I had to smarten up, right? We want to get you to the point where you can get consistent results. So how do we do that? Remember I said, it's not a matter of skill. It's not a matter of passion. It's actually a matter of psychology. So if you're in the wrestling business and you don't feel like you deserve to be there, you might be a great talent. You might have a great character, but have a great talent, have a great character, and then be a nervous wreck when somebody's talking to you. It's not going to work, right? I've been there before. John Laurinaitis has said, I could hire you tomorrow. You got the skill, you got the look, you got the character, but 
you don't feel like you deserve to be here. I don't want that to happen to anybody, right? This confidence piece, this psychology piece, being able to handle anything that comes your way is crucial to your success. So we want to make sure that you're confident, you have the right psychology behind you, you can handle anything you know you deserve to be there. We can build that up in you. The second thing is we want to get clear on your roadmap. So where do you want to go? I told you earlier, most wrestlers say, I want to make it. Where do you want to go? Anywhere. Okay, well, get in the car, put your GPS on, but don't put a destination. You'll get anywhere. How do you get to your destination? You put in the, you, they, you know where you are and you know where you want to go and there's a distance there and you start driving. And if you hit a detour, you know how to, it reroutes you. And then it reroutes you again, it reroutes you again, but then you finally get to the, to the end destination, right? But we got to know what your end destination is first. I want to make more money. It's vague. It's too vague. How much money do you want to make in the business? I want to make it and work all over the place. Cool. Where is it? Japan? Is it AEW? Is it WWE? Where do you want to go? A lot of wrestlers are just, ho they're just happy for anything. They just want to work. I get it. I was the same way. But if you want to make it to someplace specific, we have to get clear on where you actually want to go. And then finally, effective strategies. An effective strategy would not be, would not be sending an email saying, hello, sir, how are you? Nice to meet you. I'm willing to work for free. And uh, you don't have to book me, but, I'm, but whatever. That's not effective. It might work, but it's not effective long-term. An effective strategy is not going to the show and setting up the chairs and then sitting on the side of the next to the wall, like it's a high school dance and not talking to anybody with your head down, right? You put yourself in the game, but you're like friend zoning yourself, right? An effective strategy is remember what I told you, you're on the GPS detour hits. Okay. Reroute yourself, reroute yourself and then, and then make it to the end destination. There's effective strategies of communication. There's effective strategies for negotiation. There's effective strategies for goal setting. Do you know those or are you hoping? Hope is not a good strategy. Passion is not a good strategy. Passion is fuel. Hope will keep you going, but it's not a strategy. And if you keep doing stuff that's not going to work long term, you'll keep getting what you got. So you have to have awesome psychology. You got to go clear on the roadmap where you want to go and have really rock solid effective strategies that are proven. Those are the three things there. So that is in a nutshell, an overview, how to get more bookings without banging your head against the wall. If you guys want more help with this, comment below, uh, comment bookings, like do, do like a number sign, uh, a number sign or hashtag bookings, comment hashtag bookings below if you want more help with this. And I'll get you some more details on, uh, on what we can do. So that's it today. This is Jared with the Inner Squared Circle. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you soon. Comment hashtag bookings below. We'll get in touch. and We'll see what we can do to help you out. All right, guys. See you later. Bye.